Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Modern politicians, of course, seem increasingly obsessed with what they like to call their legacy. But it's fair to say that one of the biggest bequests of Boris Johnson's London mayoralty is looking decidedly troubled. His successor, Sadiq Khan, today announced a comprehensive review of the so-called Garden Bridge. And he appointed the former chair of the Commons Public Accounts Committee, Dame Margaret Hodge, to chair it. In a moment, she will tell us how she plans to establish whether the £60 million estimated to have already been spent represents value for money for taxpayers, and also whether transparency standards have been met by the public bodies involved. But first, a report from Hannah Barnes. At a cost of £185 million pounds and now running a year behind schedule, the Garden Bridge has barely been out of the headlines in recent months. The choice of Dame Margaret Hodge to lead a review into how the Garden Bridge has been handled so far is an interesting one. As chair of the Commons Public Accounts Committee, Hodge was famous for her fearless questioning and not shying away from holding the most powerful and influential players in industry and government to account. You're a company that says you do no evil and I think you do do evil. Dame Margaret will look at whether the Garden Bridge has achieved value for money from the taxpayer's contribution to the project. So far, around £40 million. Some say Hodge's appointment is politically motivated. But others who are critical of the plans are welcoming the London Mayor's decision. I'm delighted Margaret Hodge is going to take a look at this because uh, she knows, I think she can smell a, a dud project when she sees one. I think she's going to find this one is a real dud. You know, if this was built entirely with private money, uh, and there was enough private money to ensure that it wasn't a liability on the taxpayer in future, I'd still think it was frankly a waste. This is just a bad way to think of spending public money and the sooner it's scrapped the better. Last month, Newsnight revealed that the funding shortfall for the project was significantly greater than the public had been led to believe at some £56 million. Pounds. On top of the £60 million of public money pledged, the chair of the Garden Bridge Trust, Lord Davis, told us that £69 million pounds had been promised from the private sector. Since that appearance by Lord Davis more than a month ago, the Garden Bridge Trust doesn't appear to have raised any new private money. Indeed, just earlier this week, it told the Times newspaper that private fundraising still stood at £69 million. Pounds. So, despite the fact that those behind the Garden Bridge have made it very clear that this is now a critical time for the project, the money that they desperately need to make this project happen just isn't materialising. Letters and emails released this week under the Freedom of Information Act have shown that the Garden Bridge came perilously close to being pulled earlier this summer. In an email on the 11th of July, a senior civil servant at the Department for Transport explicitly asked the Garden Bridge Trust whether, without the government agreeing to extend a guarantee to underwrite the bridge, the trustees would be unable to continue with the project. B. Emmert, the executive director of the Garden Bridge Trust, replies, yes, trustees need this to demonstrate we are a going concern. She adds, that without the underwriting, they would struggle to demonstrate it was prudent to continue. Another letter has raised concerns for Will Hurst at the Architects Journal. On the 11th of July, uh, the tr Trust's chairman, uh, Mervyn Davis, wrote to Lord Ahmed, one of the transport ministers, uh, explaining that there were all sorts of problems with the project, that it might need to be terminated in the next few months, and that they'd stood down the contractor. Now, on the very same day, it turns out, the Garden Bridge Trust was telling the Evening Standard, and therefore Londoners, that the project was full steam ahead. They also released a statement on their website, this is the Garden Bridge Trust, saying uh, construction has not been halted because construction hasn't yet started. I, th I think the documents disclose something that's really quite disturbing. I mean, at the same time that the Bridge Trust was writing to the Minister in the Department of Transport to say they'd had to put work on hold, uh, they were telling the London Evening Standard that everything was going absolutely swimmingly. Now, you know, that's at best misleading. At worst, it's downright dishonest. A spokesperson for the Garden Bridge Trust said 
There is no deception. You are comparing a letter to our delivery partner outlining funding risks where we discuss the worst case scenarios with a press statement that clearly talks about the operations work the team is doing to move ahead on all the planning activities required to enable construction to commence. Dame Margaret's review will cost £25,000 and Sadiq Khan has promised it'll be published in full. It'll then be in his power to decide whether the Garden Bridge survives. Hannah Barnes reporting there and we did ask to speak to someone from the Garden Bridge Trust but no one was available. But no matter because with me now is Dame Margaret Hodge who as we've just heard has been asked by the Mayor of London to look into this project. Um, Dame Margaret, did Sadiq Khan tell you why he wanted you particularly for this job? Um, I think it's my experience over the five years of the last Parliament when um, I was responsible for chairing the Public Accounts Committee and our job was to look at value for money for public ex expenditure. And what I'm looking at in this project is not the project in its totality. If the Garden Trust raise money privately, that's brilliant, and let's hope that they carry on trying to do so. I'm looking at the public expenditure part of it, which is the £60 million promised, of which £40 million, about £40 million has been spent, to see whether it's value for money, whether the procurement process was a best practice and whether there was proper transparency in the decisions that were taken. Do you still fancy the job having, having seen that report? Well, there you are. I'm going to get a van load of stuff tomorrow delivered to my house, so I'm going to have really exciting reading over the weekend, <laughs> uh, which will give me... I get access to all the, all the papers that City Hall have, so I'll start with that. There have been various reviews. I will go through that. I hope everybody will talk to me including the Garden Trust, and after I've read the papers, I'll have a clearer view of who I have to talk to and what questions I need to ask. Of course, and, and you arrive at this task with, with your, your impartiality absolutely scrupulous, of course, but, but you do possess teeth, and they were teeth that you were not afraid to bear during your chairmanship of that Public Accounts Committee. Have you been entrusted with enough power to, uh, conclusions dependent, end this project before it's even built? Um, I'm not going in to end this project. I am impartial. I'm going. No, I know, but, but do, do, is that on the <coughs> table as a possibility? Oh, no. If your findings no. are acute, no, and no. If, if the you... decision in the end is for others, not for me at all. It's probably, you know, the pile probably lies more with the Department of Transport and with the Mayor's office, and indeed with the trust. But, but your advice could constitute a well. A, a let's caution. see. Let's see where I am. I'm trying to work out what powers you have, not not, okay. not what you're going to do I've at the end the, of them. I've got yes. the powers to look at, look at everything, all the papers in City Hall. Actually, when I was doing the Public Accounts Committee, we sometimes had to really fight to get access to papers. This time, I'm told that everything that goes into City Hall is there. I then hope will people will come and talk to me about it. Well, we, um, we will encourage them to do so, but we're going to run yeah. out of time. I just want to just clarify very briefly how, how as, a, as a layman, how nearly £40 million can be spent on a project before a brick has been laid or, or, or ground has been broken. Do we know? That's the question I will have to <laughs> ask. <laughs> so that's your starting point. That is my starting point. Dame Margaret Hodge, many thanks indeed.